Hey everyone, it's Karen from Mayfly Life. Today I'm dealing with uh, problems in my uh, in my garden. Uh, my Manitoba tomatoes are um, actually uh, ended up having uh, blossom and rot. So I uh, I'm going to show you what I did. I'll uh, I'll show you the results. Um, I just got out of the garden uh, after spraying, so. Uh, spraying my plants, my vegetables, and everything else. So, so yeah, I'll uh, I'll show you what my progress is and what I've been doing. I'll let you know what I've been doing to prevent um, prevent my uh, my cherry tomatoes, my my uh, Manitobans. Uh, how to prevent the and and to treat the blossom and rot that I you know uh, I'm a new gardener. Well, not a new gardener. I'm a um, gardener who's uh, taking things a little bit like a hobby gardener taking things a little bit more seriously uh, and taking more of a, a more knowledgeable approach to to gardening uh, to have a successful garden uh, so I've been doing a lot of research a lot of reading and uh, and how to take proper care uh, nutrients and uh, uh, differences between uh, feeding your soil and feeding your plants so, come join me. Uh, what I did was, um, is I took, um, I purchased uh, some uh, some lime uh, for uh, the treating of my tomato plants, in particular my Manitobans here, uh, with uh, a lime slurry. What I did the, the night prior was... Uh, I sprayed each leaf, each plant, uh, with a mixture of uh, Tums. It's a quick fix. Tums and water. Um, so one tablet, it was a one, uh, one 1,000 milligram tablet uh, that I crushed and placed in water and sprayed all the, uh, all the leaves. Uh, and I've heard it, people and other gardeners swear by it. And uh, so I decided to do a real quick fix for that and uh, sprayed the leaves. And then the, the next day in the morning, I went to my local garden center and picked up uh, gardener's lime. It's the pelleted form and uh, brought it back home. And uh, I also picked up this beautiful, beautiful compost uh, and uh, laid down about an inch, inch and a half of uh, layer of uh, top dressing uh, throughout my, my bed here. So what I did with the uh, pellets, uh, pelleted form of lime, was created a slurry uh, of several handfuls to a two gallon bucket of water and then just poured about half a gallon to a gallon on each plant let it soak in and then I top dressed it with this this lovely compost and uh, as you can see it's it's gorgeous compost and uh, so it's been you know it's been about three days now and uh, I've noticed that uh, it seems to have stopped the progression of the blossom end rot because I picked off all the tomatoes that had and hopefully these ones that are here right now are not going to develop into uh, with blossom end rot. Uh, so I've been checking them every day uh, to see what's going on with them. Like it didn't affect my cherry tomatoes at all. So I knew it wasn't a watering problem because I, I do water all the time. And um, uh, I water them deeply, uh, like at least uh, an inch a week per plant but if it's hotter out then you you uh, you plant you uh, water more uh, like another inch uh, you're gonna do it at an inch at a time so uh, like I could have gone with uh, uh, dolomitic uh, lime but that is a mixture of uh, calcium and magnesium and I didn't want that I, I know I wasn't uh, deficient in my magnesium for my tomato plants so I wanted a complete uh, calcium uh, supplement so hence why I picked up the uh, gardener's uh, lime uh, just with the calcium in it and what I did with that slurry was uh, 
introduced quickly uh, into the uh, into the ground for the roots to suck up by the plants. Uh, uh, immediate help for uh, for the blossom end rot uh, because of calcium deficiency. So that so far, you know, uh, I just hope that it works. Uh, so far, so good. My plants are looking a lot better. Um, the today was pretty pretty hot out, so uh, it was I think plus plus 30 today, and uh, that's 30 degrees Celsius. Um, you're gonna hear me interchange every so often to imperial and then to metric. That's about like 88, 89 degrees Fahrenheit for you guys in the states. So, uh, but I. Uh, I think uh, the biggest part was the fact that it was probably deficient of, of the calcium. The, the, that's why I got the blossom end rot. And uh, like top dressing and fertilizers are so, so important uh, for uh, the health and growth of your plants. So each plant got, like I said, about half a gallon to a gallon of... Uh, of my slurry and uh, then whatever uh, wasn't um, dissolved uh, will break down into the soil uh, over a period of time so it'll continue to feed my uh, feed my uh, plants decided to do my green peppers the same I top dressed and gave it a good soak you can see that I'm getting really <laughs> really nice nice uh, peppers and uh, here I've got like tons underneath here. I'm getting tons of eggplants. These ones are almost ready to, to pick. And uh, so I'm getting really excited about some of the produce that I've generally not had success with in the past. And uh, these peppers, namely, uh, I was never really successful with peppers, but this year, and it's possibly because of the variety. Uh, this year they're growing like mad. And you can see all of these little peppers. Like here's another bunch right there. And so it's getting getting really exciting. So a little bit of disappointment, but for the most part successful. I'm even starting to get my something's been eating this sucker I don't know who <laughs> or what but I'm starting to develop you can see <laughs> I'm developing little baby beets <laughs> so, I'm pretty excited about that cucumbers are still starting to develop and I've got here and like they're they're sporadic they're all over the place I've got all sorts of little cucumbers right in here and in here as you can see I've got quite a few here but uh, I'm not sure if, how this one's gonna do how well I've got more than I had the last time which uh, which was uh, not too bad oh yeah wow that one's growing like a stinker yeah you see it there so I've got them all over the place so that I'll have to keep an eye out for and I am spraying my cucumbers with uh, a solution of water and baking soda and uh, pure Castile soap, which is what I make. Um, uh, I only uh, I choose the pure because uh, that's what's recommended by some of the gardeners that I know. And the only pure one that I can think of, besides uh, the Dr. Bronner's, is my own homemade Castile soap uh, that I make from uh, potassium hydroxide and various um, uh, 
oils, specific oils for Castile making. I don't have the exact recipe, but I can always leave that uh, a link uh, to uh, a recipe that I have that I use for Castile. And what I'm doing is I'm just spraying them down. And this is just in a, a 32 ounce sprayer. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I've already uh, topped, like side dressed it with uh, Epsom salt and some fertilizer. And uh, hopefully this is going to come back a little bit better. Uh, leaves are starting to turn a little yellow, so that's at the bottom here. So what I'm doing here is, like I said, I'm just spraying this to prevent uh, powdery mildew. That's what the baking soda does. Um, uh, and uh, the Castile, it's all in one. Mixed it in here, uh, like half a tea, half a tablespoon each of uh, liquid Castile and uh, baking baking soda. So, but the the recipe is for every gallon, um, you use uh, a tablespoon each, and you don't have to do one or the other. You can mix them both in the same container, one gallon container. So, and that'll take care of these for now. And get rid of some of the soft bodied insects here, like whatever. And I've, I've already sprayed the underside. And uh, yeah, so. And uh, so this is day three, four. Day four, since I discovered I had uh, uh, blossom end rot. And it's like I said, now, uh, like since I've treated it with a, a nice compost, um, I top dressed it about a, an inch, inch and a half of uh, compost and uh, did the lime treatment. Um, I've inspected them and I'm finding no more, which hopefully that'll do the trick. And it's like I said, my, my, uh, Cherry tomatoes weren't affected by it, but it was just my, my Manitobans here. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that'll do it. And uh, so far so good. I haven't found any evidence. They do look like they're a little bit more perky. And, uh, and of course, you know, I don't have to tell you about my peppers and that. They're, they're doing fantastic. Uh, I can't say enough about this uh, particular uh, one. This is, uh, I believe it's called Golden California Wonder uh, Peppers. So they're going to turn a nice golden orangey color. And when they're, when they're ripe, and I'm looking forward to that because they, they're growing like mad. So I'm going to have a few peppers. My daughter's going to be so happy. She loves peppers. So yeah, I just sprayed this down and... Now, you know, it's only been like three or four days, something like that, since I treated this, and it's everything so far is looking good, because I even did preventative on my cherry tomatoes, and uh, did did lime treatment on these guys too, just so that they don't uh, they don't get affected by the blossom end rot. So, but as you can see, this is. Another couple of days on the vine, and they're starting to go beautifully or, uh, red and uh, slowly. Uh, last couple of days has been pretty cool, so I'm I'm really really excited about that. Uh, that this is going to be producing more and more because as I go up the tree, the the bush, I mean, <laughs> I got more flowers and more more cherries. So looking forward to it. So, and I'm learning, I'm learning everything that I can about uh, more, taking a more uh, logical approach to gardening rather than just willy-nilly. So I've been doing a lot of research on uh, growing tomatoes. And uh, like here, as you can see, I've got a sucker. So I pinch those off just so that uh, it doesn't uh, take energy away from uh, the producing fruit. So whenever I see a sucker, I pull them out 
And so far, so good. So yeah. Okay, and my idea of just doing the single stalk uh, for my tomatoes, uh, kind of throw that out of the way. Just let it grow as it may. I keep it two, at least just two, if I can. And uh, because some of them have already developed fairly large branches, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disrupt them in any way. So yeah. So it looks like the treatment worked, and uh, I'll continue to monitor. And uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks for joining me. Catch you in the next one.